Hello, and welcome to this overview of the Communication Sciences and Disorders Program at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Um, my name is Ruth Crutchfield, and I am, I am an associate professor at the program, and I'm going to walk you through uh, this short presentation on our program. Today we're going to talk about Communication Sciences and Disorders, and this is part of the Pathfinders Academy. Welcome. I am also um, co-chair of the Graduate Admissions Committee, so uh, feel free to contact us regarding graduate admissions if you have any questions. Here's an overview of our faculty. Our chair is Dr. Donald Fuller. We have uh, multiple faculty. We have Dr. Srikanta Mishra, who is our professor in audiology. Dr. Teresa Mata Pistocaccia, Associate Professor, myself, Dr. Ruth Crutchfield, Associate Professor, Dr. Jessica Stewart, Assistant Professor, Ms. Sonia Salinas, Clinical Assistant Professor, Carrie Gonzalez, Clinical Assistant Professor, Lily Garza, Clinical Assistant Professor and Externship Coordinator, Sandy Magayan, Clinical Assistant Professor in Audiology, and then we also have our faculty in the American Sign Language Interpreting Program, Dr. Rosemary Landa, who's the coordinator and lecturer two, Mr. Eric Cardenas, lecturer one um, for the Sign Language Program, and Ms. Betsy Rodriguez, who is our clinical manager in our Speech and Hearing Center. We have our wonderful administrative staff, Raquel Rivera, who helps, her, helps us in the Speech and Hearing Center as our secretary, and Ms. Daisy Esparza, who helps us in the Communication Sciences and Disorders Department. So now you know us, and we would love to get to know you. The objectives of today's session are simple. We're going to learn about the basics of the program, and the, um, we're going to focus basically on the graduate program today. We're going to do a profession overview, program overview, entrance requirements, career opportunities, salary data, and tips for success for you. What is communication sciences and disorders? Um, basically, we are speech language pathologists. We are known as SLPs. We, pr we provide services for uh, individuals who have difficulty with communication disorders. We talk about assessment and treatment and communication disorders entail speech, language, social communication, cognitive communication, swallowing disorders, oral rehabilitation, and augmentative alternative means of communication. SLPs work with individuals who would like to enhance their communication skills, including dialect and accent reduction. SOP serves individuals from pediatric to ger geriatric populations, that's babies to adults. So it ranges all populations. In the field, we are here to help others. People who, want, who are SLPs are people who want to impact and make a difference in someone's life when it comes to their communication. SLPs work with individuals from premature infants all the way the range to the elderly in communication disorders. A typical work day, work day for a speech language pathologist includes assessment of treatment of patients across the lifespan. The work day will differ based on your setting. You can work in the schools, um, uh, you can have be an SLP in the school, an assistant in the school, which is a bachelor's level, a rehab center, SLPs and assistants work there. In the hospital setting, it's speech pathologists only, skilled nursing facilities, short-term care, long-term care, speech language pathologists work there as well, private practice, and that's the most independent where you have your own, your own business and you work there on your own. Now, when it comes to different salaries, uh, different work days, uh, the typical work day was from 35 to 40 hours a week, a week, but it can also work on a contract basis with you work limited hours. The salaries vary depending on education, work experience, type of setting, and the geographical area. According to the US Census Bureau, the salaries range, if you can see here on the screen, from 49,000 all the way to 121,000, depending on where you are in the US. The median salary range is 79,120, according to the US Census Bureau. There is a growing need for qualified SLPs and assistance in SLPs in this area in Texas and around the country. Advances in science has led in part to this growth. The American Speech and Hearing Association, also known as ASHA, reports the reason for such growth as uh, the fact that there's more older populations, increased survival rates, 
early identification and diagnosis, increased school enrollments, and the need for contract services and bilingualism. If you look here, we can see that Texas is included in the states with the highest employment levels in this occupation. We have California, Texas, New York, Florida, and Illinois. The question um, of whether there are jobs out there, yes, they are, especially in Texas. And you can see here the salary is listed here as well. The median salary or mean salary is 74,000 in Texas. For our program, we are a Master of Science in Communication and Disorders. It's a graduate program accredited by the American Speech Language Hearing Association, ASHA, the Council on Academic Accreditation and Speech Language Pathology. The graduate program is designed to prepare graduates for the clinical fellowship, the Certificate of Clinical Competence in Speech Language Pathology from ASHA, and the SLP license to practice lang speech language pathology in the state of Texas, which leads to independent clinical practice in the profession of speech language pathology. People who graduate from uh, communication science and disorders accredited program are required to take a praxis national exam in order to obtain their certificate of clinical competence. COMD graduates from our program take the praxis exam in the fall of year two of their graduate program. And our praxis rate right now from years 2017 to 2020 was 98 point 53%. We're very proud of our pass rate. To apply to the program, you must have a bachelor's in communication sciences and disorders from a regionally accredited institution in the US, and you must have an undergraduate GPA of at least 3.0. It requires the successful completion of six academic terms in two academic years. Year one, fall, spring, summer one, summer two. Year two, fall, spring, and then you're done. Students have opportunities to complete a thesis and or participate in research projects and present such research and institution research symposium, state, national conference during their two years in the program and beyond. And we're very motivated for our students to do research. We love for them to complete thesis and to disseminate their research findings because we have amazing findings because we have our population here that's Hispanic and we can have that population of convenience that we can access here in uh, the lower Rio Grande Valley. So what are the requirements in year one? The student is enrolled in a lecture course and clinical practicum. In clinical practicum, students provide assessment and treatment services to assign patients at the UTRGB Speech and Hearing Center. In year two, fall semester students are enrolled in one graduate course on campus and advanced clinical practicum at a UTRGB affiliated off-campus site in the Rio Grande Valley. They are directly supervised by a preceptor who is ASHA certified in speech language pathology. So year one, you're on campus. Year two, you're off-site doing practicum. In year two spring semesters, um, students are enrolled in advanced clinical practicum at an off-campus site. Um, they may be in the Rio Grande Valley or they could also go to other parts of Texas. So if you're coming from a different part of, the, of Texas, you can do your second site back home or in a different part of Texas. To be successful, you must have a bachelor's degree, like we had mentioned before, in communication sciences and disorders from a regionally accredited institution in the US, an undergraduate minimum GPA of 3.0 or higher, completion of the GRE, completion of all university and COMD department eligibility application requirements, submission of all required documents by the established deadline. And a competitive student profile will have all of these that I've just listed before. You'll also have community service, membership in student organizations, leadership positions in student organizations, exceptional GPAs, strong personal statement, and an excellent letters of recommendations. What should, what should you do in high school to get ready for this program? Well, you need to have excellent study skills. You need to have excellent organization skills and you need to love to communicate. As speech language pathologists, we talk all day. You need to enjoy, enjoy communicating. Well, this is our program. Our chair is Dr. Donald Fuller. Here's contact information. Be feel free to contact him if you have any questions and we'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much and I appreciate your time.